Hello everyone, my name is Soraya and I do all the filming for my husband, Terry, aka Stutzman52. If you like this video or any other video on Stutzman52's channel, click on the subscribe button, then click on the settings button. Check it off and then click on the save button. Now you'll be notified by email of any new video uploads for this channel. Thank you. Alright guys, we got a we got a videos. We're gonna have several videos on this one here. Now we're gonna be doing a timing belt water pump change and there's gonna be some few other things that's not pertinent to a timing belt change, but I'm gonna include those videos too. Now, this ain't gonna be no two minute video to show you how to change a timing belt. Dang. Otherwise, what are you gonna learn? So this is gonna be pro this will be the most detailed timing belt change that you're you're gonna have for this 2001 Ford Escape with a 2 liter engine. Now, if you have an Escort, a Cord, or a Pro, or a Mazda Tribute, or one of the other Ford engines that's got the 2 liter engine, you're going to find that the timing belt procedure is going to be the same. Okay, so we, you know, but refer to your own service literature, you know, because this is going to be pertinent to this particular car in this year, but they all should be very similar. And besides, you get some entertainment here hopefully you know with this here video series okay now um can't think of anything else let's get going so let's get going Woohoo! well hey bro well what's going on saray you come to give us a hand well, what are you guys doing well we're gonna Get my new car going. We're going to do a timing belt change, water pumps, who knows what else. And you're going to let this idiot work on it? Oh, come on. Leave my sweetie alone. Now, every time he does a job, i got to come over here and bail his ass out. <laughs> yeah, right. About time you stayed here and helped us, yeah, bro. He knows it's true, too. Come on, stay Don't here you? and help us. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> well, if you're not going to help, at least go watch the dogs. All right, I can do that. All right, stay. We're going to have a cookout later. Oh. I'll be, I'll be here then. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Now, this will be the first time I've ever done this here timing belt on this vehicle, but I have looked at service information, you know, the procedure was, was required. So, it'll be new for me, and if it's, uh, you haven't done it, then it'll be new for you. Maybe we both can learn something here. What are we talking about? Maybe an hour's job? Oh, Ten minutes. No oh, excellent! No more than ten minutes. Yeah. Want to go yard sales? Let's get it done. Oh, well, let's go. Let's get this and let's go to yard sales. Yes. Let's do it. All right. Before I get started on this job, I'm gonna take note of this here mileage: one forty-six thousand one hundred twenty-eight miles. And now, Ford recommends that you change the timing belt every one hundred and twenty thousand miles. All righty. Let's get started on this job. First thing I'm gonna do. Disconnect the negative battery cable. Tuck them out of the way. Now what I want to do next is I want to get here and I want to move all of this air intake. This whole valve cover we're going to have to get it off so I'm just going to be removing stuff that's just right over top of this thing. Alright so the first thing I think I'll do is I'm going to disconnect Mr. Airflow Sensor. Mm -hmm. So we take a screwdriver, we'll push it in, push, push down on the tab and then, oh, nice. Nice, wasn't it? Easy. Did you like that? We like the easy jobs. Yeah. Uh, this here is a throttle linkage cable. Obviously, we got to take him out. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to be taking this here hose clamp. We're going to loosen him up. And also, there's a hose clamp down here on this side down in here. So, we're going to loosen that one up down here. There he is, right there. Yep, see him. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and loosen him up. Just a regular yeah. screwdriver. Yep. Oh, I believe it's also an 8 millimeter socket, if you want to put a socket on it. Okay. So now we got him loose. We have these two vacuum lines that's connected up here to this here snorkel. So let's just pop them out. Also, we have a PCB hose here. Let's go ahead and we'll slide him off. Hose is there a little bit swollen up, so... I'd say he probably needs a new one. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see if we can loosen this thing off. <clears throat> this one is probably. Watch him be the bear. 
No, see, it's going to be an easy day today. Oh, I've decided. Easy day today. Easy day. That's right. Think positive. Yes. What did they put a carburetor on here for? Why? Why? I don't know why. I thought this was a 2001. It is. Why what? you got a carburetor? I do have a carburetor. Is that a good way? No, it's not no carburetor. Then don't scare me like that. I don't know what you're talking Latin again. And so we don't have a bad day. Let's cover up this here throttle body. All right. Okay. Good idea. One thing that bugs the hell out of me is when they put hose clamps on and they're turned sideways where you can't get access to them. So I'm just going to take care of that right now. So I'm going to turn it up there. We can get access to it. Just putting a little silicone spray on this here rubber grommet. Let's put a little bit right there. Make it a little bit easier probably to come off. This one right here is the throttle linkage. This one over here is for the cruise control linkage. So I'm going to go and see if we can get this one off of the throttle linkage. So see if we can just pry this thing off. Okay. <clears throat> see if we can get the one for the cruise control off. This one here looks like the cable. Just push it back that way. Oh. It should come off. And there he be. Nice. Again, a little bit of silicone spray. Throttle linkage. You want to take it, turn it counterclockwise, and then pull it out. There he is. Mm -hmm. Now on this cruise control cable, there is a fastener, plastic fastener, right around the outside edge, as you can see. Now what we should be able to do is we can just grab this here cable, and we should just be able to pull it out and separate it from that fastener. Okay, so there he comes. And... You'll find that you can't get it out through, so just go ahead and kind of squeeze on the tabs on the back side and get this fastener out. Then we can take the cable on out. Wow. Then now we can just take it and we just snap it on. So now you can see what it looks like. Easy. Easy peasy. Yes, sir. So, so far. Now we have, uh, remember the objective right now is we're going to kind of, you know, maybe start getting the bolts loose you know, on the valve cover. Of course, we'll have to get the timing, upper timing cover off here before we actually can pull this thing off. But right here, while we're on the top of the engine, that's why we're focusing up here. But anyway, now we got these two O2 sensors. Now, it looks like somebody done a little hacky job here. Always. And then you see, oh. see we got a tie wrap there. Yeah. Now, this here connector slides right up here on top of this here, you know, this here mounting mounting little bracket for it, so I don't know. It looks to me like the connector is still intact, so let me cut this tie wrap. I do not know why they did not put it back in there. Let's see if it works. Let's see if we can slide the thing on there. Yeah, it's gotta go from the top. Uh, anyway, look like it won't go down far enough. All right, we'll look. We'll look at that a little later. Now we have a tab right here, so let's just push it down with our finger. Push down. We should be able to separate this. Okay. And here's another thing. So you see, we got a tie wrap right there. Okay. So you know that's not supposed to be there. And then somewhere this thing plugs up. Somewhere I don't know where. Okay, another something to worry about later. Okay. This one's a little bit harder to get to. Get it. Get it, get, get it, it, baby. That tab keeps wanting to slide. Okay, 
All right. Now that we're looking at it, now that I see this, so we know, okay, we have a black connectors go together and we have the, uh, the white, the gray connectors go together. Okay, so, okay, no chance of doing that. So we're okay. Better play it safe and be sorry. All right, guys, so what I did is I took this here little bracket out here, out of this here bracket. Now, the way this thing will work is there's a little catch right here. You slide it up underneath a screwdriver underneath this part. You can just kind of slide it up. See how it's sliding up now? Okay. And so you have to come in from the top side like this. And you just come down. And when you slide it down, you'll see that little, that little tab right there. And when you slide it, you see it'll click and then it'll lock it in place. Gotcha. So then at this point, then you should be able to slide it and just stick it right in there. Okay? It'll go right in the holes. So right now I'm just going to fold him back out of the way. And we need to work on this one down here. It's hard to get to the tab on this one to release it, so I'm just going to just pull the whole thing out. All right? And then I'm just going to fold him back. So we know now that the black connector goes to the bottom, gray connector goes up on the top. Okay. Now we have this here little harness and it's, it's like it's attached to a stud right here on the bow cover. So let's just lift him off. Mm -hmm. And we also have a little fastener right down in here. Let me just see if I can pull this thing out of here. Is that orange thing a special tool? Well, it's, it's used for like uh, pulling off door panels and oh, okay. things like that. All right, to finish up this fastener, I'm going to use a zip clip tool. I'm going to see how well that works. I'm going to go up in there, hook around it, do a little squeezing. Oh, nice. Yep. And that works. So, is that going to give us enough slack? Probably not, maybe. We have another plastic fastener on this side. That's similar to the one on the other side. It secures this harness to a stud that's on the valve cover. Maybe I can get up underneath. Let's see pop if we can. Well, pop yes. him off. So there he is. So you can see what he looks like. Yeah. Okay. Now. I think we got a little enough slack that we can get this here cover off. All right. Now, right over here for the fuel injection harness, mm -hmm. I see we now. I'm assuming we should have a nut on this thing right here, right? But we don't. Uh, so let me get a screwdriver and let's just see. We can just pop him loose. And we'll just kind of swing him out of the way. All right. What else we got here? All right. So we're going to have to get a spark plug wires. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll start on that next. All right, you guys. This here harness here for the uh, O2 sensor, the one with the black connector. Mm -hmm. This thing kept falling on down in there. So what I did is I just took a tie wrap, just kind of loosely hold it on there with, along with the other one. So it ain't going to go anywhere. Okay. Now this step is not necessary, but for you guys, that may be for the DIY guys, you may want to do this. Now I had the service literature, but uh, so it's not really necessary. These cylinders are numbered one through four, starting from the front of the engine, and the front of the engine is right over here. Now the firing order on this engine is 1342 as a waste spark ignition. So there's two coils in the coil pack. One and four on one coil will get fired. And then two and three will get fired on the other other coil. Alright, so let's get our spark plugs wires here loosened up. Now Try to twist these things, and then once you twist them and then try to 
try to pull them up. Hmm. Now they could be very, very snug here. But like this one. How did that go, Terry? Uh, I can't do the sound effect again. <laughs> you, maybe you can help me out here. Can you help me? <laughs> there you go. Woo. That was a real tough Good one. Lord him, it looked like he damn rushed down in there. Of course, ain't no water, though. Mm -hmm. Where'd you buy this car from? Raleigh. From the ocean? <laughs> I think it was from Virgi Virginia, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, take note, this is right up in there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just want to get a shot how these here cables are laid up in there. So this one's up on one. This one here is three. This is four. And this one here is two. Okay. So the way they fire. Well, it's just to make it a little bit easier when we wrap the wires back in. I mean, it probably wasn't necessary, but... It'll save a little time. You think they would have some place to secure that, you know, like bolt it down? Or it's it, loose. Or, you know, have it molded into the to the valve cover. You see there's nothing. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Came back and looking at this thing. Well, guess what? Whoever put these damn things on, they actually, they snap together. Look. That's how they're supposed to be. Ah. Uh. Damn. Well, I mean, what the hell is wrong with these damn people? Take, take damn things off a car, and then don't put it back like they were. Get it, baby. Oh. Yeah. Woo. All right. So now we got the spot plug wires out. Okay. So here's our spot plug holes. Yeah, and you notice you see the rust down in there. Yes. It's yeah. Terrible. Yeah. So hopefully these spot plugs are not. And in that down. one. In these damn threads down there. That looks nasty down there. Well, and no sign of water in up in there. Nope, dry as a bone. So I don't know where it came from. But what I'm going to do, guys, here, I do want to take these plugs out. So I'm going to spray some crawl. I'm going to spray some crawl down in there and let that crap just soak. get rid of rust? Well, it'll help break that rust, you know. I'm hoping, and what this will do is it'll go past the threads and it'll find little tiny, tiny crevices and it'll go down in there. And I can see it's already gone down through there. So. So we'll let that soak. See, if you look at that one right there, you see how it's kind of going, in. see how it's going down? Mm -hmm. That's going past the threads on the spot plug, so that's good sign. So it's getting down in there. If these things are seized, then hopefully the crawl is gonna, you know, kind of break that loose, that rust loose, so we can get in there with a, you know, a ratchet and screw these things out. Okay. Because my guess is that none of this here timing belt probably has never been changed. I don't know the history of the car. You know, the spot plugs probably never been changed. Who knows what? So we're gonna start fresh. That's why we're doing all this stuff. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. A little bonus here on the ignition coil pack. Turns out they actually marked this for us. Isn't that nice of them? Okay. So there you go. You see three is on top on the top left, one's underneath, two is over on the top right, oh, yeah. and four is under the bottom of that. So there you go. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna take out the valve cover bolts. Okay. There's ten of them. Take note there's three studs. One is right here, one is over here, and one is over here. Hmm. The rest of them are bolts. Eight millimeter socket will take care of that for you. So, I'm gonna be working on this. Catch you guys in the next shot. Right, so I've got the valve cover uh, bolts out. And what I'm doing right now is I got some crawl spread in here, so let these bolts soak. You can see there's a little bit of rust on them, so I'm going to let them be doing this magic here. Okay, this thing was not even... Yeah, that's good. It wasn't like RTV'd in here, so basically it's already broken loose, so no big deal. All right, so we got all this here loose. 
Next. Next. What's next? What's next? All right, looking this thing over. We're gonna have to take this here engine mount out. And I can see, I think we're gonna have to take this bolt. Oh my Lord, way the hell back under these AC lines, this high pressure line for the uh, for the power steering. Come on, remember, easy day. Easy peasy. Easy day. So, I believe we need to get this coolant bottle out of the way. So we're gonna take that out. So, as I mentioned, I think we need to get this out of the way and to do this, and, I, and since I'm going to be changing a water pump here, I'm going to be draining the coolant. So, now if you're going to just change your timing belt, you don't need to change your water pump because it does not drive off of the, the water pump does not drive off of the, uh, the timing belt. So it's actually off the serpentine belt. But, since we have the mileage on this car, let's go ahead and just change it out. So anyway, I'm going to loosen up the cap. And then we're going to go to the pet cock that's on the radiator. Mmm, pet cock. Yeah. Now, the, the pet cock, by the way, how what did, a terrible word. How did they come up with pet cock? It's like uh, it's a cock and you should let, let me look more closely and maybe play I can with tell it. you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. <laughs> anyway, your pet cock is located over here on the driver's side of the radiator. 19 millimeter socket. We'll take care of that for you. I got a catch pan underneath. Drain this coolant out. And there she goes. Now there's a plastic cover down here, but it's got slots and everything in it, so I'm just gonna let it drain through these slots. I don't want to get under there and take this cover off. So we're gonna let it do that. Okay. We just let it pee. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Guys, what do you think? While this thing is draining, what do you think? You think we ought to go ahead and take a break? Yeah, but I'll tell you what. what? I think our neighbor, I smelt some uh, charcoal. Charcoal? Charcoal. Char huh? <laughs> Someone is doing burgers on a That's charcoal your, grill. That's your British accent. <laughs> You're screwing you up. I thought you were supper. You screw me up. <laughs> anyway, let's wrap this video up, guys. We'll take a little break for you guys, and we'll start picking it up in the next video. Appreciate you guys watching and we'll continue this song going saga in the next one. You guys take care.